Growlithe is infamous for not learning the move Growl. That seems like a massive oversight. As long as you're playing Pokemon in English. That discrepancy doesn't exist in other languages, so it doesn't matter, right? Well, it sort of does if you ask me. Only sort of, though. What's up, fellas? My name is Matt, and today Elias and I are going to take a closer look at Growlithe and see why I can't learn a move that's contained within its own name. This is also part of a larger point we have to make about translation and localization in general, so let's get started. Good morning, fellas. My name is Elias, and we mentioned that Growlithe can't learn Growl in a previous video. This was a common point of disagreement in the comments because people pointed out that Growl's name in Japanese translates to cry, which doesn't make sense for a Pokemon that's described as fearless in the Pokedex. But we have to be careful not to take these translations at face value. If we're talking about crying as in sadness, then sure, it wouldn't make much sense for Growlithe to learn it. But the Japanese word they used for cry doesn't translate that way. This word refers to animal sounds like roaring, chirping, meowing, and most importantly for today, barking. Growlithe is absolutely a Pokemon that would bark when threatened in battle, and growl is a move other dog Pokemon can learn. Furfro, Fido, Grivard, and so on and so on. The noise a Pokemon makes when you send it into battle is called its cry, and the original Japanese for growl means cry in that same sense. Plenty of words have multiple meanings in English, and each definition will usually translate to a different word in Japanese. If we're talking about the more common definition of the word cry, then sure, by all means don't give Growlithe that move. But since Growl's Japanese name just means animal sounds, the move makes sense for Growlithe either way. Whether you look at it from an English or a Japanese angle, the combination of Growl and Growlithe checks out. Growlithe's first status move is Leer, which is also learned by quite a few other dog Pokemon, like Houndoom, Poochiana, and Stoutland. All of these guys learn Leer, but not Growl, so I think it's entirely feasible for Growlithe to get either move. But that does raise the issue of Growlithe not learning a move that's literally a part of its English name. The people designing the game aren't responsible for that, but the localization team is. Eh, uh, sort of. When we point out that Growlithe can't learn Growl, it's not because we just don't know that Pokemon is a Japanese game first and foremost. What we are saying is that this is the type of thing localizers should try to avoid. If you're introducing things that don't make sense logically in your translation, then that's kind of a problem. Not a massive problem in this case, but it's still a noticeable one. When we made a community post about Growlithe, we got a comment saying, that for Gen 1, the localizers couldn't play the game they were translating, so they didn't know the context of the words they were using. And that's a good point. In all likelihood, the localizers wouldn't have known that Growlithe can't learn Growl. If you're just given a list of words and phrases to translate with no context, you won't know how they interact with each other in-game. So thanks for pointing that out. The localizers just had to do their best with the limited time and resources they had, so we can't fully blame them either. But move names do occasionally get changed in other languages. Well, here goes. Two semesters of Italian don't fail me now. Besides English and Japanese, Gen 1 Pokemon was also translated into Spanish, German, French, and Italian, using the English version as a base instead of the Japanese one. The English word Pound has a few translations in Italian, and in Gens 1 and 2, the Pokemon move Pound was known as Libra. There's just, uh, one weensy little problem with that. That word doesn't mean Pound is in hit. Libra is the Italian word for Pound is in the unit of weight. That'd be like if English Pokemon had a move called Kilogram. In Gen 3, Pound's Italian name would change to Butta, which does mean hit. With that in mind, changing Growl's name in English after the fact would be fair game as well. The name- Ah! Elias is scrolling the screen and I can't read. <laughs> I lost. You suck. Okay, here, 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 Alright, you're- Alright. The name does work in most circumstances, though, so it's definitely not the most urgent change that has to be made. Pound's Italian name definitely had to be fixed, though, because that's a pretty noticeable translation error. But Growl is fine for the most part. We're just using it as an example, to kickstart a discussion about translation. Speaking of which, our video about Pokemon not learning moves they should is definitely affected by the fact that we speak English. If we spoke French, for example, I'm sure we'd come up with a different list of moves to talk about. Pointing out weird stuff in your native language is fine, even if those problems don't exist in other versions of the game. When we're on the topic though, leave a comment if you play Pokemon in another language and let us know any fun facts or inconsistencies you know about it. Does Pokemon in Chinese exist? Yes. <laughs> so Elias is uh, oh, looking at it. Okay. yeah, Elias is looking at Pokemon names in Chinese, and I'm just taking his word for it that they're funny. Dude, green caterpillar, Lumatol. <laughs> okay. One thing we've seen people say is that the Japanese version of the game is the only one that matters, because that's the original language Pokemon is developed in. That's a sentiment we don't agree with. The reason translation exists in the first place is to make media more accessible. It allows people to read more books, watch more TV shows and movies, and play more games in their native language. You don't need to learn Spanish to read Don Quixote, you don't need to learn Greek to read The Odyssey, and you don't need to learn Japanese to watch anime or play Nintendo games. Uh, look, they named Pidgey blah blah because that's the sound that a pigeon makes. Trans 
translating games is incredibly important because it makes them available to a wider audience, so localizers should ensure that the translations are logically consistent wherever possible. Most people aren't going to learn Japanese just to play Pokemon in its original form, just like most people don't learn Japanese to watch the anime in the original form. So a high quality English translation, for example, will make the game more enjoyable. You can't just stick the Japanese text into Google Translate and call it a day. That would make the game a lot clunkier to play if you don't speak Japanese. Google Translate didn't exist back in Gen 1, of course, but you get the idea. Translation requires a great deal of effort because languages aren't just one-to-one -one carbon copies of each other. This is slightly off topic, but Spanish really got the short end of the stick localization-wise. The dialogue and moves were translated to Spanish, but most Pokemon's names were identical to the English version. The only exceptions are Type Null and the Paradox Pokemon. Every other Pokemon's name is just borrowed from English. We'll get to why that is in just a second. A lot of the wordplay in the English names just doesn't translate to Spanish. Just as an example, Feraligator's English name probably comes from Fair and Alligator, Eliza's favorite Pokemon by the way, with some spelling tweaks to fit a 10 letter limit. Both of these words are completely different in Spanish, so if that was the only language you speak, its name's meaning is effectively lost in translation or lack thereof. And the same goes for Italian as well. The vast majority of Pokemon don't have Italian names either. Meanwhile, French and German do have their own set of Pokemon names, so here's Feraligator in those languages. You might be wondering why French and German got their own Pokemon names, but Spanish and Italian didn't. Well, all four versions were originally going to reuse the Japanese names, but French localizer Julian Bartikoff objected. Some Pokemon's Japanese names sounded like unsavory stuff in French, so he wanted to come up with new French names himself. Nintendo agreed, and Bartikoff went on to name all of the Gen 2 Pokemon in French as well. The French version of the game has some other pretty interesting stuff going on, so leave a comment if you'd like to see us talk about it in a full video. In all likelihood, we would not be speaking French. We would get, like, a friend to help us. Julian Bartikoff also served as a temporary voice actor for Luigi, from the hit series Luigi Bros U. <laughs> <laughs> He took on the role in the Japanese version of Mario Kart 64, as well as the original Mario Party. Of course, Charles Martinet took over from there on out, but we're getting off track here. Bartikoff's push to give Pokemon Chinese- Bartikoff's push to give Pokemon French names also paid dividends for the German version. Following in Bartikoff's footsteps, Patrick Fabry gave the Gen 1 Pokemon German names as well. The other languages didn't get the same treatment, unfortunately, because Nintendo already had a framework in place for translating games to German and French. There was no such framework for Spanish and Italian at the time. In fact, the people who translated Pokemon to Italian were the first Italian localizers Nintendo ever hired. Pokemon Red and Blue was effectively a test run for future Nintendo games in Italian, so there were some things Elena Fogazzaro and Leonardo Piero just weren't able to do. And it was a similar story for their Spanish localizers, Susa Alkami and Antonio Greppi. Since Pokemon didn't have Italian and Spanish names in Gen 1, Nintendo kept reusing the English names in Gen 2 and beyond as well. Meanwhile, French and German still got their own names each generation. Check out Did You Know Gaming's video about translating Red and Blue after this, by the way. We watched it during our research, and there's some really interesting stuff in there. Link in the description. Alright, that got a little off the rails, so let's get back on track! Even though we don't agree that Growlithe shouldn't learn Growl because of the move's Japanese name, there are some cases where the Japanese version does explain some weird stuff. Oricorio has a really cool signature ability in the form of Dancer. Anytime another Pokemon on the field uses a dance move, Oricorio will immediately copy that move as well. This doesn't take the place of Oreo Oreo Corio. <laughs> this doesn't take the place of Oreo Corio's turn either, which means it can use more than one move in a single round. I'm just gonna like Photoshop an Oreo on its head now. Sure. There are a bunch of dangerous moves Oreo Corio can copy with Dancer, including stat boosting moves like Dragon Dance, Swords Dance, and Quiver Dance, as well as attacks like Fiery Dance and Petal Dance. Say you spell fiery? Yeah! That's crazy. One notable move that Dancer can't copy is Rain Dance, even though it has Dance in its English name. The same goes for all of the other European languages as well. Good luck! Danza Lluvia means Rain Dance in Spanish, Danse Pluie means Rain Dance in French, and so on and so on. The reason for that is pretty simple. The move's Japanese name is Rain Prayer, so it wouldn't make sense to classify it as a dance move. Rain Dance was introduced in Gen 2, and Dancer was added in Gen 7. The ability was created 17 years later, so the localizers couldn't possibly know that Rain Dance's English name would cause problems. It's also worth noting that copying Rain Dance wouldn't actually do anything anyway. Dancer makes Oreo Corio copy dance moves immediately, right after the other Pokemon uses their move. Since the rain would already be up, the second Rain Dance will always fail. So Dancer not working with Rain Dance doesn't actually make any difference gameplay-wise. For more videos like this, subscribe to Me Plays Games and consider becoming a channel member. Stick around after the video for our podcast, Me Played Games, as well. Today, Elias will be going through his Alpha Sapphire cartridge, and I'll be grading the Pokemon in his boxes.
Iron Fist classifies moves in a similar way. It powers up punching moves by 20%, so it'll boost the power of stuff like Drain Punch, Ice Punch, Dizzy Punch, and Shadow Punch, which I think you'll agree makes perfect sense. It's pretty clear that all these moves are punches, so they're fair game. But one move Iron Fist doesn't boost is Sucker Punch. Once again, this makes more sense if you look at its Japanese name, Surprise Attack. The move is just a cheap shot your opponent isn't ready for, which isn't necessarily a literal punch. The move doesn't allude to punching most other languages either. That also explains why some Pokemon without arms can learn the move, like Huntail, Diglett, and Saviper. God, when was the last time you thought about Huntail? We're not making this video with the intent of dunking on anybody. Not the game developers, not the localizers, and not the people in the comments who disagreed with us. But the comments we got on that video really got us thinking about translation, and this is our way of following up and continuing the discussion. We had a lot of thoughts about translation, so we decided to make another video to share them. Translation is a hard job, and we're not going to pretend it isn't. Every language has its own unique nuances, so you're never going to have a perfect one-to-one -one translation. But it's still interesting to look at weird inconsistencies in other versions of Pokemon. Localization also just wasn't a priority for game developers back in the day, so the folks they hired to translate the game didn't always get the time or resources they needed. At the end of the day, Growlithe not learning Growl isn't the biggest deal in the universe. Except it is. No, it's not. <laughs> Nowadays, the localization process is a lot smoother than it used to be, so things like that are less likely to happen. Well, that's all we got for today, fellas. Leave a comment if you liked the video, and like the video if you left a comment. We'll see you all next time. Good night, fellas. Sleep well.